Hey everyone, Nico from Nebula Photos here. I'm here with Dr. Michelle Bayliss, and this is her Snake Mountain Observatory and her German Shepherd Argos. And uh, she's going to tell us all about this new observatory and her older one that's built into the house. So thank you for doing this, Michelle. Um, give me sort of the history of observatories on this property. Okay, sure. So 20 years ago, when we moved to Vermont, I really want, I had a giant 16 and a half inch Dobsonian telescope and I needed a place to put it. Um, so I asked my builder if he could create a third floor of the house with a ship staircase that was tall so we could actually get the telescope, build it up in there and just leave it there forever, which is exactly what happened. It's been there and it will never move till the house, you know, burns down to the ground. Yeah. And, and you use that visually. And now you told me that you you now use it mostly with the bino viewers, right? Yeah. Well, you know, as you get older, I'm not saying how old I am, but your eyesight gets worse. So um, yeah, I used it visually for years with different eyepieces, which still look great. And when I have other kids and people up there, I usually use the eyepieces, but I ended up meeting um, Russ from Denkmeyer Optics and he convinced me and a local astronomer here to get the Denkmeyer bino viewers and they've completely changed my viewing like when you dial it in for the diopter and for your eyes you can see things in 3d you can really like see them in just incredible space and you can change the magnification without taking off any eyepieces so I can do three different magnifications just by adjusting the things on the side and then you did have a sky shed pod right here um, what made you decide to change from the sky shed pod to the roll off Right. And I love Wayne from Skyshed Pods. He's like my best buddy. And I love my Skyshed Pod. Um, I had two problems with the Skyshed Pod. One is I wanted to get a second telescope and I realized that I, I could barely fit one and myself in the Skyshed Pod. Um, and the second problem was just that because I had told him I was doing visual and then I ended up getting sucked into astrophotography, I offset the pier kind of the wrong way and it was block the roof was blocking the meridian, whichever way I, I rotated the roof. And instead of trying to fix that problem, even though we did just slide it back and it worked for a few weeks, but then I just decided I would go bigger and build a permanent shed so but I ended up selling that to another local astronomer so it had a, it found a home yep. and you said that you only started construction on this just weeks ago and it's already done. So how, how did you do that so fast? Okay, well, yeah, we have these really nice construction guys who have done some projects for us. And I was like, hey, do you guys want a challenging project? Like, I want to build an observatory. I can show you some examples from our local Vermont Astronomical Society. So they did a field trip and they visited two different ones in the state. Um, and they had they worked also off um, partially Wayne's um, plans from Skyshed Pod. So they kind of combined that along with the other site visits and they literally drew it up on a napkin and we had three guys here so they did it pretty fast I would say the total was probably two and a half to three weeks from start to finish so I mean they did a pretty amazing job and then I actually talked to you right when I was trying to figure out what to do with the motor and you told me that you had come back from I think Neef and seen the Dark Dragons Astro yeah. so I called those guys and they were super nice and were like they sent me out the last unit they had and we immediately got it installed so it was pretty gratifying because that went up in like a day. Mm -hmm. And you uh, use an astrophysics mount, a Takahashi telescope, and you were using the ASI Air. You've recently moved to Nina. Tell me about that uh, sort of <laughs> adventure. Okay. Well, I love, I'm, I'm really glad because Chris from Takahashi Telescopes has been super helpful and he was the one who helped me get the telescope and he set me up at the ASI Air because I'm completely like not good at technology. And I have to say the ASI Air was amazing for the year I used it. I mean, it was very easy to set up. Chris helped me get all the settings dialed in. It worked great with everything. I had some problems with the AP mount, but stuff that I could get around. Around. And then once I met Ryan from Dark Rangers Inc., he convinced me that I was stuck in the ZWO system. And if I wanted to get a QHY camera and kind of get some upgraded gear, he was like, you need to get out of the ZWO ecosystem and convert over to Nina. And I was like, yeah, but I'm too stupid to do this. It's too complicated. And he's like, I have a deal. If you buy all the equipment and send it to me, I will use it, program it for you, do a video on it, and I will come and install it. And I was like, deal. So he came on site over Memorial Day weekend, spent you know three or four days here in Vermont, thank God, and installed everything. And now that I've watched him do it, I feel like I might be able to handle the next one, you know, myself, maybe not the technical install part, but the drivers I think I could do. Uh, but it was really nice having him here to do it and set it up for me. So that was a, a gift. And now it's, you know, basically all set up. Yeah. Great. So uh, an average night for you, if, if it's clear, you, 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 could, you could use both observatories, you could be doing visual in the house and then be controlling everything wirelessly right from, from your house. Yeah, in fact, I had a, a local, um, we're right by Middlebury College, so one of the professors has a son who's super interested in astronomy, so I had him over a few weeks ago on a clear night, and it was really great. This is when I had my ASI Air. I was like, okay, let's sit here and put it in. So we put in the target. It started sending five-minute beautiful images, which we did outside. Then we went in the kitchen and watched it. Then we went up to the observatory in the roof, and we literally looked at objects visually, came back down, saw all the images coming in, and he had like two and a half great hours of seeing like the images come in off this scope and then visually looking through my other ones. And tell us a little bit about your other hobbies. I know you're an avid hiker. 
Oh yeah, I have a lot of hobbies. Well, one, I collect mechanical keyboards and build them and use them, but that's because I, for my work, I type all day. So I love, it's kind of like a musical instrument. I love like buying different keycaps with themes like Lord of the Rings. So yeah, I love my keyboard collection. I am an avid hiker. So I spend, you know, years um, hiking all the mountains in all of the Northeast. Um, that's all the Vermont, Maine, New Hampshire uh, mountains. And there's 115 of them. And then my hiking partner and I just wrote like the Falcon guidebook to hiking the Northeast 111, it's called, even though there's technically 115 mountains. Um, but yeah, we hike all the time. I, hike, I love winter hiking, actually. So all winter I hike. And if I can stay awake, then I come back in image. So it's like the perfect combination of getting in your workout and then, you know, being able to do that. And in a few weeks, I'm actually going to hike in the Alps, too. We have a very a lot of hikers here in Vermont. So my friends are like super hikers. I'm kind of like the, the weak link in the hiker family chain. So awesome. And Argos, your German shepherd, does the hikes. And then he's also your astro dog. Right? He is astro dog. Yeah, he's actually a protection German shepherd. So I'm a little bit afraid of the dark. And you can see we have, you know, 140 acres of land backed yeah. onto a 2000 acre nature preserve. So there's bears and other all sorts of animals in the back. So it makes me feel better in the middle of winter when I trudge out to my observatory to have Argos. He goes out and does a perimeter check. He barks at all the animals. He senses anything. And then he sits with me inside the observatory. And yeah, hiking, he's great to have too. Like he's a great safety gate and he just loves being with me. So I take him, you know, unless it's really, really hot or like 25 below zero, he'll go with me on all my hikes in New Hampshire and the Adirondacks. I feel like a lot of people in astrophotography are sort of loners and they don't, they sort of stick to themselves. And I feel like you are showing like, no, you can, a lot of people are very helpful. You can reach out to people and they're willing to help. So talk about that. Well, that's actually what I've loved the most about this hobby. I think that's why I like, would like, like to quit my job and be a full-time astrophotographer because the community is so welcoming. I think I've noticed that almost everyone seems to be an engineer or like a NASA employee. And I'm just like a literature major. So I feel like there's a disconnect between like, I shouldn't even be able to use this. And that's why I'm like amazed that I can do it in the ASI Air Help, but I was very lucky because the first person I think I met was, you know, Chris, who runs um, Takahashi uh, America, and he was super helpful, set me up with my first system, helped me buy a great telescope. Um, Wayne Parker from Skyshed Pods is like my buddy, always comments on my photos. He's super supportive. He answered a million stupid questions. The guys from Astrophysics, I would also give a plug-in for a company. They're phenomenal. Like, it's the only company where you can literally call and get the president mm -hmm. talking to you on the phone, and they have troubleshooted. They've helped me download drivers. They've answered a lot of stupid questions. They're very responsive on their forum. I mean, I have questions like and I need someone who can answer, which has been frustrating, for example, with QHY. There's no one to ask the question to. You have to email China and wait four days for a response. That's not really up my alley. And then I was very lucky to meet um, Ryan Voikin from Dark Rangers, Inc. He actually came down and did this entire install. And he's also tutored me on PixInsight, which has been super helpful because in addition to all his technical knowledge, he's super good at processing. And like I'm going to continue to get better. But I think I accelerated my learning curve on PixInsight by, you know, uh, probably a year by just, you know, working with him one one-on-one, -on -one, learning how to stretch properly, and just all the little hidden features of Pix Insight. So he's just great for technical stuff and for, for tutoring and stuff. Great. And and what's what's next for you? I know that you you have the the base for the next peer. So you're you're thinking about that second setup, but you're not sure exactly which direction to go. There. I know. I'm kind of conflicted. I, I've been asking a lot of my friends. Oh, and I, I forgot to mention two other shout outs, sure. if I may, because it's like there've been so many, it takes so it takes a village to obviously help me get up and going. So I it, that's really my fault for not being good at technical stuff. But um, this other local gentleman, Paul Walker, has been super helpful. He's a member of the Vermont Astronomical Society. He's been, I think, the secretary for 20 something years. But he had to come and do a lot of like hands on stuff. And sometimes I just get nervous. Like I don't want to balance the scope without someone there. So he lives 10 minutes away. He's happy to always come over and help. So he's been a huge help. And Greg Arian from Burlington has all, or Winooski has also been, or actually, sorry, what's his tab, whatever, Northern Vermont. He comes down sometimes to help too. And he's just super, I'll be like, what are you shooting tonight? What target do you recommend? Would you do this in SHO or LRGB? And he's been really quick. He always answers my questions. So I just feel like everyone's trying to help and be nice and volunteer their time. And, you know, no one really wants anything. And also the head of the VAS, um, Terry Zietrich is an amazing astrophotographer. And she has a lot of my similar, like she has an AP mount. She has a Mac too. So she's also been amazingly helpful. And I just went to our annual meeting and I got to meet a bunch of other astronomers. So it's a great community here in Vermont. I mean, it's like, there's a lot of people. So now I feel like there's a lot of people to ask and it's just great, you know, having everyone there. Mm -hmm. No, I forgot your other question. Oh, just uh, about your, your second <laughs> setup. You're thinking of going between wide field or or matched to the uh, Takahashi. Right. Well, now I've actually realized, thanks to Ryan explaining all this to me, that a lot of this stuff has to do with the sensor size, too. So, like, even just going from a, a smaller sensor to this full-size mono camera actually, like, you know, made the, 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 fr the field of view way wider. So then I got to thinking, because we don't have that many clear nights in Vermont, instead of just getting a wide field scope, what if I got something like the Stellar View 140 Raptor, which would overlap with the focal length of my Takahashi so I could actually have 
two scopes taking like one taking SH and one taking O or whatever LRGB and split them. So I'd get double the time on every object, but then have the opportunity to put a reducer on it. And then again, using the different size of the, the camera, or a bigger sensor in effect, getting like maybe 700 or 650 or whatever up. So I could almost have like two for the price of one. So I'm trying to figure out the best way to max. I don't want to have three. That's too complicated. Yeah. So I want to have two and then be done forever. And I just love refractors. Like, I just think they're the best. I mean, I know you can get, you know, like, I don't know, a, a plane wave or whatever, but I just think these are, I need something easy to use. Well, is there anything else uh, I didn't get to that you want to uh, mention about your observatories, your property, anything you want to say? I mean, I'd almost put it just a plug for dark sky stuff because actually um, we had during the eclipse, my daughter was a, a TA at Princeton for an astronomy professor, um, an astrophysicist who is very passionate about like dark sky and dark sky um, you know, outreach to everyone. And I mean, it's such a problem. And actually, I think this month's astronomy or sky and telescope also had a big feature. And I think like we all as astronomers have to really like join the dark sky society, really advocate for downward facing lights. I mean, I've been trying to get like Middlebury College to not light up ironically its observatory has uh. horrible lights all over the biggest light pollution is from the bicentennial hall that has its telescope in it and i'm just like this is wrong you guys you need to put like the downward facing lights and there's just so much more we can do about that and you know there are all these beautiful sites in arizona and new mexico that they're putting in regulations for but we have to protect it it's a natural resource and if like we don't pay attention to dark skies we're not gonna be able to do any astronomy yeah yeah, and you're right. There's there's not, you know, the Northeast is pretty bad, but up here in New Hampshire and Vermont, we still have dark skies and yeah. it's like we want to protect them. But it's like then you look at like a college which should know better yeah. and they have these super expensive lights that are completely upward facing and they're not even helping the kids stay safe, you know, so yeah. they're just not it's not really a good idea. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think we just all have to like, you know, advocate for that and join and push for that because they're, most people don't care when you show them that the downward facing lights are just as safe mm -hmm. and just put the light down and they don't ruin the sky. People understand it. Yeah. So I think it's like incumbent upon all of us to try to figure out, you know, how are we going to be better stewards of the night sky? Awesome. Well, so, thanks so much for having me, Michelle. This was great to see yeah. your observatories. And, 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 and we, we didn't get a perfectly clear night sky last for night, sure. but I did see some stars and it was pretty, it was pretty nice here. So thanks so much.